Hello, Mathies. In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you guys about sum and difference of functions and just in general what a function is. So functions are any kind of a relationship between variables. It just means that every one x or independent variable has only one y. So it's not just a relationship, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So remember when we're dealing with functions, functions are any type of a graph that passes a vertical line test. What that means is I can draw a vertical line through any part of that function and it will only touch once because it is a one-to-one -one relationship, 1x, one 1y. One now functions are named by their dependent variable. So here I have three different functions for you. There's f of x, g of x, and p of x. I can use any letter at all. And that letter is the name of the variable. Now inside each one of these brackets is x. And this is just the independent variable. It can be any letter at all. It's just the independent variable that each function uses to determine its value. So when we are talking about functions, we are talking about the y value. If I have a specific x value, what's the rule? And I follow that rule and the function is the output, which is the y value. So x goes in, y comes out. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on sum and difference. So here's two different ways of denoting it. One way is I put f plus g inside the brackets, defined for x. Another way is it's just f of x plus g of x. So I keep the x value the same and I add the y values. Similarly for difference, I can have f minus g at x or f of x minus g of x. In both of these scenarios, x will always be kept the same, and it is the y value that will be added or subtracted. So in this first example here, I have a linear and a quadratic function, and I want to sketch the graph of f plus g at x. So f plus g at x is the same as f of x plus g of x. So you can see I put f of x into y1. This is f of x and I put g of x into y2. So for the mapping notation, I keep x the same and I add my y values, which is just y1 plus y2. So if we add these together, if I have a quadratic and I add it to a linear, combining these together, you can actually see x squared minus 4. If I add that to a linear of x minus 3, I end up with x squared plus x minus 7. So you can see I end up with a quadratic. So when I add or subtract um, polynomials together, it will just be the value of the higher polynomial. So if I wanted to do the sketch of these graphs, I'm just going to pick a couple of values, noticing that the range of my graph goes from negative 10 to 10, so I kind of want to stay in that range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at from negative 3 to positive 3. That will keep me in that nice window setting. So I keep x the same, I add my y values. So negative 6 and 5 is negative 1. Negative 5 and 0 is negative 5. When x is negative 1, I have negative 4 plus negative 3. When x is 0, negative 3 plus negative 4. When x is 1, negative 2 plus negative 3. When x is 2, I have negative 1, and when x is 3, I have positive 5. So I'm going to plot those on the graph, and I'm going to expect to see a quadratic function. So at negative 3 and 1 is right there. At negative 2 and negative 5, right there. And then I have negative 1 and negative 7. Oh, I think that's down one more. So at negative 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there we are right here. And then 0 and negative 4, right there. And 1 and, oh sorry, 0 is negative 7. Can't line everything up here. 0 and negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there we are. And then 1 and negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right over here. And then 2 and negative 1. And lastly, 3 and positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over to 3, right there. Okay, and then I can kind of connect the dots to see 
what my graph is going to look like. Something like that. Okay, just a rough sketch. I always like to see it on the calculator to see how I did. So here's what I did. I put y1 is f of x, y2 is g of x, and I added the two. So I just did y1 plus y2. And here's the instructions on how I got the y1 and the y2. So you can see this section here that we were looking at, x stayed the same and y is added. That was everything from negative 3 to positive 3. And you can see I ended up with the same y values. So there's my graph right there in the black. x stays the same and y is added. So let's try that again when we don't have an equation. So something like this. I want to graph, I have the graph of f of x, I have the graph of g of x, and I want to graph the sum f of x plus g of x. So my recommendation to you is to line points up vertically. So to line the points vertically, and then add your y values. Now I don't have to add every single thing. I just want to look for some parts of the graph that are going to kind of help me. So I'm just going to look for nice ones. So for example, I'm going to line this x value up here. So I see that it's 1, 2 above and 1, 2, 3 below. So that's a negative 3 and a positive 2 is just going to be a negative 1. So I know that the graph is going to go down that way. And then I'll go to my peak right here. So for this x value, I'm 1, 2, 3 above and I'm two below, add those together and I get one. So I can just connect those dots. And then I'll go down to the next one here. So when x is zero, I have a y value of zero and a y value of negative three. When I add those together, it will just be negative three. And then I'll go to lining up this x value. I can see that it's two above and three below. So two and negative three is negative one. So I can just connect that. And then maybe just pick one more. Let's say for this x value it's 2 above and 1 below. 2 plus negative 1 is positive 1. And then just connect my dots like that. So that would be a rough sketch of what the graph looks like. So let's look at subtracting now. So here I have f of x and is a linear. g of x is a quadratic. And I want to find f minus g at x, the equation. Then state the resulting domain and range. So f minus g at x is the same as f of x minus g of x. So let's look at this. Linear minus quadratic. So my linear equation, and I would subtract my quadratic equation. Let's see what type of a graph I'd end up with. I would have 3x plus 2 minus x squared plus 4. So you can see all together the highest degree is 2. I would end up with a quadratic. So again, for adding and subtracting polynomials, it will be the degree of the bigger. So since I know I'm going to have a quadratic, I know in 20-1 I learned that quadratic, the arms extend infinitely in both directions, and they cover all possible x values. So I can write it like that in set notation, or from negative infinity to positive infinity, round brackets because it doesn't include it for interval notation. Now with this and every graph, I always recommend you go to your graph to determine what the range will be. So I see it's a quadratic with a negative leading coefficient, so I expect it will open down having a max. And yes, it does in fact have a max. So again, when we talk about max, min, or function, we're always talking about the y value. So the range is everything that y is less than or equal to, and I see my maximum value there of 8.25, where y is still an element of the reals. Or in set notation, I can say it's from negative infinity, not including, up to 8.25 square brackets because it includes it. Okay, let's look at one with radicals. You could uh, call these cool equations because they're radical. So we have f of x, 2 root x minus 3, g of x root x plus 1. I want to find the two added together, finding the domain and the range. So graphically, if I add a radical and a radical, I'm still just going to have a radical. So the domain and range of f of x and g of x must consider both functions. So the domain of f of x, let's look at that, x minus 3. x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means it's going to be greater than or equal to 3. 
So writing that in proper set notation, I'm going to say it's the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 3, but still an element of the reals. Or in interval notation, I can say including 3 and up to but not including infinity. Now let's look at the domain of g of x. g of x is x plus 1. So x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x is greater than or equal to negative 1. But again, I want to write that in proper set notation. So combining the two, I'm going to say that x is x, sorry, the domain is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1, but still an element of the reals. Or in that interval notation, I can say that it is including negative 1 and up to but not including infinity. So if I want to combine the two, I want to choose the domain that will cover both. So since it's greater than 3 and greater than negative 3, always choose the bigger number because they go in both the same directions and that will cover it for both. So that's going to be the combined notation, the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 3, but still an element of the reals. Now again, for the range, I always look to my graph for the range. So there's my graph of the two added together. And I can see, looking at my endpoint, and I knew my endpoint was 3. So on the calculator, I just did trace, 3, enter, and I get a y value of 2. So I can see that my range is the set of all y, such that y is greater than or equal to 2, but still an element of the reals. Or in set notation, I can say including 2, up to, but not including infinity. That would be your range value. Okay, so let's try a rational equation, and we will subtract. Okay, so we have f of x is equal to 2 over x, g of x is 1 over x minus 4. I want to find g minus f of x. So if I have a fraction and I take away a fraction, I still have a fraction, so it will be irrational. So the domain and range has to consider both. So let's look at the domain of g of x right here. I can't divide by 0, so x minus 4 can't be 0 which means it's the set of all x such that x is not equal to 4, but it's still an element of the reals. Now for me, I think that interval notation is a little bit more challenging than set notation, but if you wanted to write it with interval notation, it's basically everything except for 4. So it would be from negative infinity up to but not including 4, or 4 up to but not including infinity. So if you like to use interval notation, that's how you would do it. And again, this symbol in the middle here means or. Okay, the domain of f of x right here is the set of all x such that x is anything except for 0. And again, you can do the same thing for interval notation if you want to. So that will be from negative infinity up to in, but not including 0 or 0 up to but not including infinity. So combining g of x and f of x, I have to have both. So I'm going to say the domain is the set of all x such that x cannot equal to 0 or 4, but is still an element of the reals. Again, I think that's the easiest way of doing it, but if you want to do interval notation, you have to do it in steps. So I'm going to go from negative infinity to 0 or 0 to 4, not including any of these, or 4 to positive infinity. Just depends on what you want. Okay, so range is always the tricky one. I always go to my graph for the range, and I can see a couple things going on. So it's kind of like two different sections. So I can see in this section here, it's above the x-axis. I know it's above because if I just look at f of x up here, 2 over x, I am always taking 2 and dividing it by x. So this fraction here will never equal 0. 2 divided by no number at all will get me 0. It can get me close to 0, but it won't ever be 0. So the first restriction that I have is it's a set of all y such that y is greater than 0. 
or now let's look in the second section of this graph. So in the second section of this graph, I have a parabola that's opening up downwards, which means I have a maximum and I calculated that maximum right there. So it's also less than or equal to about negative 1.5, but still an element of the reals. So again, if you wanted to do this in interval notation, we just have our two different pieces here. So we're going greater than zero, but not including. So that would be zero to infinity, or, which is the union. And then I would add in my last one, negative 1.5 and below. So from negative infinity up to and including negative 1.5. That would be your range. Okay, so we've looked at graphs, we've looked at specific equations, let's look at numbers now. So we have f of x is a linear, g of x is a quadratic, I want to evaluate f plus g at 1. So first of all, f of x, that's the name of the function, it's called f. So when I want to find f of 1, I'm talking about that function there. So I can find f of 1 by replacing x with 1. So see how it's 2 times x plus 1? it's now going to be 2 times 1 plus 1. So that would just be 3. I'm going to do the same thing for g of x. So g of x, this is the rule for x. So if I want to find g of 1, I'm going to replace all of my x's with 1. So I replace that one and that one. So instead of having x squared, I have 1 squared minus, instead of 2 times x, I have 2 times 1. So now I just have to work this out. So I've got 1 squared which is 1, take away 2, plus 1. So working that out all together, you get 0. So now that I've figured them out individually, here's what I can do. f plus g at 1 is the same as f at 1 plus g at 1. Now f at 1, we just found out from above was 3. g of 1 is 0. So when I add the two together, I get a value of 3. Now the great thing about functions is that you can always check these and you can use your calculator to help you. Let's look at that now. So you can see I entered in here f of x plus g of x. So I entered in the equation f of x plus g of x. So I just added them together and I get a parabola because a linear plus a quadratic is just a quadratic. And then I look at when x equals to 1, the output is 3. So what that means is that f plus g at 1 equals 3. And that's what we got over here, so that tells me that I'm correct. Okay, so to summarize the lesson, to add and subtract functions, I want you to keep the x values the same, add or subtract the y values. If one part of a function has a domain restriction, then the combined function will have that restriction as well. I always recommend for every single chapter, always look to the graph to find the range. So that's the end of our adding and subtracting. Um, probably my two favorite operations because subtracting makes a difference and adding is always positive. So you guys can do practice questions in my notes first, numbers 1 through 5. The detailed solutions for those are on D2L. And then after that, go to the textbook solutions. The next lesson we will do is multiplying and dividing.